If you're looking to get some muck coins to up your muck game, go to MMORG.com for cheap and safe muck coins for your game. Use my promo code HUB, that's H-U-B, for a 6% discount on your order. Once again, go to MMORG.com to get yourself some muck coins and use the discount code. What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's your boy Kush back at it again with another Giants video. So today's video, real quick, kind of a little bit of disclaimer. I want to say that this is gonna be kind of an old school video. I didn't really do any type of research or looked up anything for this. I just had a lot of thoughts to get out of my head um, after yesterday's win. And I want to put down in the video. So this is going to be purely my thoughts. You know, editing as well is going to be old school, meaning that you're just going to see the background here, the music. And that being said, let me get some of my thoughts out here to you guys. And one of the biggest ones I had was one of the first things that struck me when that game started yesterday. And that was the benching of Andrew Thomas and the starting of Matt Pert. Now, it did come out after the game that Thomas was benched because he was late to a team meeting, I believe, or he missed a team meeting. Whatever the case was. He was not showing any type of good discipline by missing or being late for that team meeting and Joe Judge decided it was time to punish him. Now part of me likes this and part of me doesn't. Part of me likes it because why in the world is our first round pick missing you know team meetings who does he think he is and am i a little bit worried about andrew thomas's character now it's a little bit something that puts me on the edge i mean can you blame me for being put on the edge deandre baker had trouble with meetings and we saw where that went now i'm not saying that's where andrew thomas is gonna head but it does at the very least put me on the edge a little bit and also i like it because judges judges basically asking him the same thing who do you think you are who are you? You are not above this team, Andrew Thomas. You are still a rookie. You still have to earn your stripes. You're only five games into your career. Um, hell, man, like you haven't even proven to be a great, you know, first round talent yet because you're still developing. So, you know what? Take these lumps and then take the punishment with it. At least he didn't bench him for the entirety of the game. Part of me doesn't like it because the fact that uh, if we didn't win yesterday's game, I'm sure, you know, it could be a reason that we didn't win was that Andrew Thomas was seating for the entire one. Uh, you know the entire game instead of being seated for like i don't know just the two quarters i think he was and now then the other thing is matt pert the guy who came in for him the tackle out of uconn third round pick 99 overall on um, matt pert came in and matt pert looked good i mean pert looked good when he came in against the cowboys as well for that drive and honestly i thought he should have been starting this week and the way i saw them rotating them two at left tackle just got me thinking why in the world is cam fleming still there just have them both out on the field at the same time and now i'm gonna say this matt pert did look better than andrew thomas yesterday it was in limited snaps very limited snaps i i don't know what the uh exact number count is but once again pert was in there i think in the second and fourth quarter he was starting at left tackle and andrew thomas was in there for the first and third here's the thing he looked better than Thomas. He handled Montez Sweat better than Thomas. He didn't whiff as many blocks. The one that's coming to mind right now from yesterday, I think it was a run play. It was a third and one situation. I don't know who it was got off of Andrew Thomas, but it looked like Thomas didn't even try. They got all the way around him and all the way to Devontae Freeman, who was running towards the other, you know, the other direction in the field and stopped him. And we didn't get the third down conversion. Uh, Matt Pert didn't do any of that. He was relatively okay. You know, he wasn't the best because you know, down in the fourth quarter, much like in the Dallas game, the uh, Giants offensive line started to collapse a little bit as the, you know, the pass rushing of the opposing team started to get to Daniel Jones a little bit. But Matt Peart looked good. And all it got me thinking was put him in there at right tackle. Now, yeah, I know a lot of you will be saying, nah, put him in there at left tackle. I think Thomas has shown enough that he's not left tackle material. I'm still not giving up on him. You could call me a homer all you want. He's He's still a rookie with five and a half games under his belt. He hasn't even had his full rookie season yet. I'm going to let him play out his full rookie season left tackle. Maybe he'll adjust. Maybe he won't. Either way, have him out there at left. Have Matt Peart out there at right. I mean, this is what the Giants drafted. This is what their offensive line was sort of looked like it was going to be built towards. It's what got me excited about us having the two, you know, in terms of in the draft, the two tackles with the longest wingspan in the entire draft. That size right there is going to do something good for you. And then when they, whenever they're out on the field together, for example, last week in Dallas for that week, when they were out there together, 
they had the longest combined wingspan, you know, of any NFL tackles in the league that week. And Matt Per has proved more than enough, in my opinion, that he's earned a job over Cam Fleming. Maybe they didn't want to put him in there full time um, at right tackle because they were like, this is a tough Washington defensive line we're going up against. Maybe there's some other reason. I don't know. Whatever it is, Cam Fleming is out. Put Perrett out there. Put Andrew Thomas out there. And I'll be a happy dude. And you guys know this from me because I, I loved Bo Thomas and Pierre coming out. I mocked both of them to the Giants way back in March, back in April when I was doing my mock drafts. I mocked both of them to the Giants at, at exactly where they would pick Pert at 99, Andrew Thomas at fourth overall. Here's the thing. I got this question asked, by, um, asked to me during the stream and it's definitely relevant here. Is it a bad thing if Pert turns out to be the better left tackle and, you know, Thomas turns out to be the better right tackle? Nah, it's not. If we that means we have two franchise tackles if that's the case and i'll be perfectly fine with that maybe that's what would happen but i think we shouldn't just shift thomas yet Let, let's see how he does there and if pert is having a pretty good time at left tackle that means he's going to be even better at the right side it's always easier to protect um the right side of a quarterback if their blind side is the left so he should have no problem starting at right tackle and at the very least that should be you know closed up that should be safe you'll have pert and zeitler over there you know what i'm saying so at the very least i say for the rest of the season keep thomas at left start pert at right if by the end of the season it continues as is then shift them switch them maybe pert is the better right tackle i don't know though and then the other thing that was really big on my mind that i've been saying since essentially week one and really has been my only knock on joe judge and this coaching staff because you know we all know that they have pretty big say on who what the active day game day roster is and they 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 had a pretty big say on who they drafted in free agents and whatnot i really really hated entering this game with just four wide receivers it's something we've done essentially since week one of the nfl season don't quote me on this but the only game i can think of where we didn't have four wide receivers and we had five was chicago I'm pretty sure we entered the 49ers with four, the Rams with four, and Dallas with four. And then, of course, yesterday with four. It was just really stupid. And it, I, I don't like being a couch GM, a couch coach, because I'm not. I repeatedly tell you guys I'm just a fan, just like you guys. But uh, this is something that all of us fans can see. Four wide receivers is a bad idea. Four wide receivers is setting yourself up for failure. And that's unfortunately what happened with the wide receiving core yesterday. Prayers out to uh, CJ Board. I think it came out that he had a sprained neck injury um, after the game, along with, of course, a concussion. Because when he went down, he was knocked out. He was asleep on the field. And it was honestly kind of a scary sight. Um, prayers out to CJ Board. But then with him gone, we were left with just three wide receivers for the game. And Darius Slayton, who also got a little bit hobbled because Darius Slayton was injured before the game he was one of those like late games actives this guy was hobbled again during the game golden tate who didn't even look 100 percent until last week he was in there he wasn't even targeted that much and austin mack who was just elevated from the practice squad and got no type of nfl experience on him that's like one of the worst wide receivers uh core you could have just those three guys and for whatever reason jason garrett didn't really adjust his passing attack, he didn't adjust into using Evan Ingram and Caden Smith a bit more, which is weird because in the first half, once again, just like in Dallas, he used those tight ends a lot and then they disappeared in the second. And he didn't adjust into using Wayne Gallman more or using Deion Lewis more, whether it was to have diversity in the run game or, hey, you know, putting them in the pass game because all of our running backs out the backfield can catch the ball, put them in the slot, use them a bit more. But you set yourself up for filler going in with four. Uh, I've been saying it since week one. I hated it. It's probably my biggest complaint about Judge and this coaching staff. Um, you know, the biggest consistent one. And they got to fix it. It's a short week. I have no idea how they're going to fix it. Just like the tackle one, I, I should say, I hope and I expect Andrew Thomas and Matt Peart to be our starting tackles against the Eagles. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's what should be. And we should be entering the Eagles game with five wide receivers instead of four like last week. But now we got to find two replacements. We got to find a replacement for CJ Board. And we got to find a replacement for Sterling Shepard, who I think is still on IR. Whether those um, come from, I have no idea where those will come from. My best guess would be the practice squad. It looks like they're going to have to activate Derek Dillon and Benjamin Victor. And we're going to have three practice squad, three rookie wide receivers on our team, which is crazy to think about because it's not. that's not good. You know what I'm saying? It's not good because your veteran wide receivers, Golden Tate, who's getting older by the day, and then right behind him is Darius Slane, who's still developing, and then you got three fresh, you know, young bloods that who knows what the performance is going to be, but it will be better than nothing. Because, and with the four-day time limit that we have, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to make this before Thursday hits. Uh, damn, it's so unfortunate that we're playing Thursday Night Football this week. 
the only realistic part I could see them go to, you know, the only realistic source I could see them going to is the practice squad. Because in free agency, unless they bring back Corey Coleman, they're going to have to go through a bunch of procedures and get him up to date, whoever they bring in with the game plan and, the, you know, the playbook and whatnot. But we got to enter Thursday with five wide receivers, man. Please, I don't want to enter Thursday again with four because the injury bug has really hit us this year. And it was scary to see how, see how many injuries happened at MetLife yesterday. So those are really my two, you know, just kind of jumbled up strings of thoughts I want to get out to you guys. You let me know yours down below. Let me know what you all think. Put your thoughts down below. That's it for now. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.